Hi guys, this occurring challenge is called Save the Prisoner. Here we have a jailer and he's trying to play a prank on some prisoners. I'm not going to get too deep into the instructions because there is a simpler way of understanding what this challenge is about. But basically we're going to have some prisoners sitting on chairs and the chairs are going to have some numbers. So from number one all the way to number n, the chairs are going to be in sequence. So we will get chair number one, then number two, number three, and so on. And there are going to be some pieces of candy, which are going to be distributed among the prisoners. And we want to find out who gets the last piece of candy. So let me simplify what this means. Let's say we have a range like this one right here, what I'm highlighting. One, two, three, and four. So this means we have four prisoners. And we are going to refer to the number of prisoners as n. So n is going to be one of the parameters in our function when we try and solve this hacker rank challenge. Now we have six pieces of candy or sweets, let me change that to candy, we are going to refer to that as M. So if we want to give them six pieces of candy and they are four, we're going to rotate through that range. This means we are going to go like this, one, two, three, four, and then we restart five, six. If there were seven pieces of candy, then we would do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You get the idea. So if it's 10, then we would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine, 10. So we rotate through that range and we restart all the time. So I'm going to set this back to six and I'm going to show you how we can get the ending position. So now we are going to refer to the starting position as the parameter S and here S equals one, meaning that we are starting from the chair number one, or I'm just going to say position one. So if we have four prisoners N equals four and we have six pieces of candy, then the ending position is going to be two because like I said, it's going to be one, two, three, four, and then five, six. So we can have ending position equals two. That is what I'm highlighting here. So in our solution, we're going to return an integer and it's going to be the ending position. Now, what is the basic counting logic here? How do we know it's position number two? Well, we can simply have this formula here that I'm highlighting, S plus M minus one. Why does this even make sense? So let's say that N equals four. And now we have only two pieces of candy. We start at position one. Position one gets a candy. Position two gets a candy. So it's going to be one and two. If S equals two, the starting position, then we're going to get one, two. If S equals three, we're going to get one, two, like this. So the starting position is included when we are counting. That is why we need to add minus one here. It's kind of like when you count an array, because it's zero base, you need to deduct one to get the index of the last element in the array. So the idea here is the same. When I say starting position plus the number of Kinsey, I need to add minus one. Now, how do we solve this problem if we need to restart? This counting logic here only works if we have a single pass through our range. So let's say we have four prisoners and we have two pieces of Kinsey. Starting position is two, where well, we simply do one, two and then the ending position is going to be three. But what happens if we have like 10 pieces of candies and we start at position three? We're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. This time around, we had to restart and rotate through our range because we had to go back and continue counting from one to four all the time. So to find the ending position whenever we need to restart, we can use the modulus operator. To give you an idea, let me plug that into my logic. So now let me grab this here and I'm going to make a live example at the top here in my notepad. Let's say that we have four prisoners. We have 10 pieces of candy and we want to start at position number two. So the real answer has to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight, nine, 10. So the real answer has to be three. This has to be our ending position. So let's see if this formula is going to give us three. Well, S here equals two. So let's replace S with two. So I'm going to replace M here with 10 and N corresponds to the number of prisoners. So I'm going to have N here and I'm going to replace it with four. And let's calculate this. So this is equal to saying two plus 10, which is 12. 12 minus one is 11. 11 mod four, four times two is eight. The remainder is three. So this is correct. And in position is three. And our operation here also give us a result three. So that's the logic here. But what happens if the starting position is three? Now we're going to run into a small error. 
And let me demonstrate that right here. If I plug this in, I have S now equals 3, M equals 10, because I'm grabbing M from here in my example, minus 1 mod N. N equals 4. So I'm going to replace N with 4. Now let's calculate this. We're going to have 13 minus 1. That is equal to 12. So I can have 12 here. Remove the parentheses. 12 mod 4. Well, 12 is divisible by 4. So we're not going to have any remainder. 12 mod 4 is going to give us 0. We don't have 0 here in this range. And it's a wrong answer. So what happens if we get a number that is divisible by N? We simply need to return n. So that's the logic here. Let's say I start at position 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we got the ending position as number 4. And 4 is equal to n. That is what you can see here. So I can say if this thing right here gives us a number that is greater than 0, then we can return this as the ending results. Otherwise, if this thing right here gives us zero, then we need to return n. If you don't get this, you can also replay my video and go back to my examples. Otherwise, uh, let's switch to the code and we can simply solve this Hakarang challenge with a simple line of code. So the logic that you see here, what I call restarting logic, this thing right here, is the same thing as what you see here. So this uses a ternary operator, which is pretty much a different style of writing an if-else statement. And here, what I have, s plus n minus 1 mod n, is the same logic as what we were using at the top to find our ending results, which is also the same thing as what I have here. And now I'm saying, if this gives me a result that is greater than 0, so if this thing right here evaluates to true, then I'm going to return the results of that operation. And that's the same thing. That's what I want to return. And by the way, I need to remove the closing parentheses here because it's incorrect. But basically, if this evaluates to true, then I can return this. Otherwise, if this gives me a number divisible by n, this means that the last position in my range is going to be the ending results. Or we can call this ending position. And that is what we have here. Colon means if this evaluates to false, then we return n. You can rewrite this if you want as an if-else statement, or you can also introduce a variable and store the results here like ending result equals this, and then you compare if you want to make your code a bit cleaner. Anyway, let me now run this code and make sure that we got the logic correct. We pass sample test case zero and also sample test case one. Now let's submit this code and we should be able to pass all the 12 test cases from zero to 11. And we just did. So that's it for this Hackerang challenge, guys. If you liked my solution, please make sure you subscribe to my channel to support it. Make sure you turn on your notifications and please share this video. I'll catch you next time. Bye.